I have 65% of my calls are, are behavioral health. I, I think that we have more mental health crisis now than we've had ever. I, I think there's just a, most of the time it's not they want to hurt you or anybody else. It's usually themselves that they, uh, that we find that they're causing harm to. Had a, a female client that was uh, borderline on her way to crisis. It's been several days that she's taken her medication, and I've known you know this uh, this client for years. So something just simple again as just talking to her and kind of making a joke and hey, let's go to the hospital. Uh, she was willing to come out and take her out to Maine Medical Center and, and look for, for some assistance from there before things progressively got worse. A lot of times it's. These interactions with people are beyond what our training is, but we know that we have some social workers that would come out. So if we can bring out a civilian that's a social worker that can advocate for them for treatment. And then they want to see me because if a police, if it's a choice between a police officer and Missy Esty, the police liaison social worker, they're like, hey, I'll go with her. And I'm, I, want to, I want to try to figure this out with her, you know, because I think they're in trouble. And they know they're not with me. It's, it's huge for us, all of our liaisons, they all carry radios. My number is 345, so I listen for that, and I listen for 44 or 43 issues. 43 issues are substance use, and 44 is uh, for mental health needs. But yeah, I would say I see three to five people a, a day. I always have something to try to like get the person to relate and, 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 and to be for comfort. So they can tell me what's going on. If they're operating out of fear, they're not ready to get help. But I knew that there was still a need out there, and I was still willing to see people in person. Um, and so I, I threw chairs in the back of my truck, and uh, I'd go their driveways. So again, if you just go there and and think about uh, treating people you would, the way you'd want someone to treat your family members. The person deserves as much dignity as anybody else, including the police officer themselves. So how I viewed police officers before I took this job was like, uh, in general, was that they were more interested in dealing with a problem so it's out of their hair versus, in and in, in just to get it done, versus um, in a compassionate way. You know, joking around with these guys usually gets a better uh, outcome than leaving them on the street. Um, you know, and if you can get them a coffee and they're willing to drink that coffee on a 22 degree day instead of drinking a cold beer where something a, a lot worse could happen for them, uh, it's something that's pretty simple, you know, and it does go a long way with them that you do appreciate them as who, you know, for who they are. Almost always the police arrive first, unless I'm already with that client and I'm the one calling the police, which I do at least three to five times a week and say, I need some help with transport for this client because I don't feel safe driving someone or um, the person so out of control that my safety could be at risk or anybody around me. A couple of years ago, she was at a call for service, six o'clock, you know, evening, usually later than she would stay. Uh, talking with a grown man who now all of a sudden was really angry, picked up a hammer. Um, so she called for assistance. So sometimes um, even she underestimates how angry some of these guys can get. Someone that says that they want help and then they don't get it will up the ante, so to speak, or they don't feel needed and less valued. That's what hopelessness, that breeds more hopelessness and suicide. Um, and hurting themselves or hurting others. With us going there, it kind of made that uh, difference of he can't commit any kind of act of violence because the police are here, and she's still able to talk to him and you know say, hey, these are some things that I can offer you, you know, take you to the hospital, I'll stay with you, I'll make sure that we get the assistance we need. Um, and this one worked out well with a guy, uh, put his hammer down, came out, talked to Missy, ended up meeting us at the hospital, stayed with them. I just want to hear what's going on. And if they'll tell me where it's at because they're not worried about hurting my feelings and I'm just easy as far as like that's concerned, then I can really recommend a level of care. And the way I'm going to approach it is, 
you know, you have to go to school just like I have to go to work. How are we going to change this? And he's not going to really answer me today. And then I'm going to see him again tomorrow. I'm going to bug him until he changes. It's, 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 it's like fishing for a marlin. You know, you just like, sometimes with a case, it's long. It's long. I, I met the kid for the first time when he was like seven. And he's 13 now. And it, it happens in spurts. So that's what's up. I know the chief has said it before that we want to leave people in a better situation than we found them. Uh, and I think that is, is, is what's going to make us succeed is, you know, doing the right thing simply because it's the right thing to do. You know, I think this, that we're in a lucky city that's really continuing to be awesome. You know what I mean? As far as like caring about the people in the community and wanting them to be okay and safe. And it's only getting better, like as far as a response for mental health. And, and we're approachable. You know, we, we want to see you succeed. It, it feels good when you see someone later on, they say, hey, thanks a lot what you did. You don't know them, but they know you. You know, you have so many interactions with the public that you don't remember everybody's face, you don't remember everybody's names. They've had one interaction with a police officer and you made a difference. So it, it's, come talk to us. You know, we, we, if I don't have the answer, I know somebody that does have the answer.